Silence is golden. Luke one five to twenty five. The Gospel of Luke opened with a dark cloud, a deep sigh, and a mood of resignation. The drama increased by the absence of recorded prophetic utterance for about four hundred years between the Old Testament and New Testament. God's presence, power, and purpose, however, were evident for all who had eyes of faith. God's four hundred years of silence between the two testaments was broken by a loud announcement, but it was greeted with strong skepticism and outright disbelief by one of his most faithful servants. What is mid-age faith? When did the midlife crisis in faith strike? How can believers become young at heart and fresh in faith again? First, God deserves our best. Luke one five to seven. Zechariah was a trustworthy, devout, and active priest. His ancestor was Abijah. Verse five, whose forefather Eliezer was the son of Aaron. Israel's first high priest, Numbers three thirty two. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Not one, but both were righteous and pious before God. Zechariah was a devout man of his own choosing, and Elizabeth was a devout woman of her own cognizance. Since the couple did not have kids. They have the best of their time, talent, and treasures to serve God. Zechariah did not need prodding from his wife to attend to his temple duties, to be on his best priestly behavior, and to live up to his priestly vocation. No public scandal or troublesome past tailed him. No destructive habits or moral vice gripped him, and no petty dispute or oil gossip entangled him. He was as goody two shoes, as sweet as pie, and as prime as proper as one can find or get. Second, God demands the best. Luke one eight to nineteen. Zechariah was the talk of the town, the envy of the priests, and the celebrity of the week when his name was chosen by lot out of all the priests in his division to go into the temple and burn incense. Verse nine. To add the topping to the cake, God sent an angel to announce the good news and congratulate him personally. This is the first time the Greek word "evangelize" is used in the Bible. In verse nineteen, the first evangelist poured out his heart, but the news did not hit Zechariah hard. Zechariah's attitude left much to be desired with, and was unappetizing to an angel's stomach. The angel was jumping with joy, but Zechariah. Did not even break into a sweat. The angel assured Zechariah that his prayer was remembered and answered, in verse thirteen. But Zechariah was unmoved, unimpressed, and uninspired. The announcement of a boy by name instead of a girl, verse thirteen, still did not make him curious. The angels stressed of joy, delight, or gladness, and rejoicing in verse fourteen did nothing to wake him from his listlessness or indifference. Third, God delivers His best. Luke one twenty four to twenty five. God's intention from the start was to reward. And not to rebuke Zechariah and Elizabeth, to bless and not to break the two, 
and to congratulate and not to condemn. The faithful couple, Zechariah's attitude, nevertheless, was reservation and not rejection, doubt and not desertion, and uncomfortable but not unforgivable. The priest had always had a flawless record of unsparing, of outstanding service. Further, Zechariah's cold shoulder was not Elizabeth's fault. The best gift God had given the priest was his wise and godly wife, Elizabeth. Elizabeth's attitude was just the opposite of her husband's. Unlike her husband, who had to say something, she hid herself for five months. Verse twenty-five, to pause, to ponder, and to praise. Verse fifty-eight. Zechariah came around much later. Verse sixty-four. God's ultimate purpose was for him to be stricken and not silenced, not to be mute. But to be a messenger, not to be dumb, but to be delivered. Conclusion. God is not satisfied with half-hearted, wishy-washy, and sweet nothing believers. Are you trapped in disbelief, ensnared by delusionment, and hobbled by disobedience? Have you stopped growing? Serving or reflecting. God is not finished with you yet. Ask God to help you see what new opportunities, fresh challenges, and unfinished tasks you need to work on.